प्लीज बी रेडी फॉर ए डिक्टेशन ऑफ एक्सरसाइज नंबर 18 फ्रॉम प्रोग्रेसिव मैगजीन ऑफ ऑगस्ट 2022 थाउजेंड सेकंड्स स्टार्ट मीन वाइल आई हैव सम गुड न्यूज फॉर वर्कर्स द वेज सीलिंग फॉर कवरेज अंडर द ई पी एफ एंड एम पी एक्ट नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू हैज बीन एनहैंसड फ्रॉम रुपीज फाइव थाउजेंड टू रुपीज सिक्सटी फाइव हंड्रेड टू प्रोमोट द वेलफेयर ऑफ एम्प्लॉज आई प्रोपोज टू एनहैंस द सीलिंग फॉर गवर्नमेंट कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वन पॉइंट वन सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ मंथली वेज ऑफ एम्प्लॉज to the pension fund from rupees 5000 to rupees 6000 per month the extra expenditure on this account is estimated to be rupees 77 crore per annum whereas the organized sector is at present covered by various pension provident fund and gratuity schemes the unorganized sector does not have adequate social security coverage i am asking the insurance regulatory development authority to look into all these issues and provide a road map for pension reforms by october 1 2001 generalists have to increasingly take greater risks in covering terrorist and other violence prone incidents as an acknowledgement of their services and sacrifices and with the expectation of a better treatment at their hands i propose to set up a journalists welfare fund with a contribution of rupees 1 crore under the grants of ministry of i and b my colleague the i and b minister will announce the details of the scheme our entertainment industry particularly the film industry not only provides the much needed fantasy to millions of our people who live in an otherwise harsh and cruel world it has also emerged as an important segment of our economy and holds greater promise for the future two years ago i provided for this industry the same tax exemption that was available for merchant for merchandise exports a few months ago the government issued a notification under the idbi act whereby entertainment industry including films has been declared as an industrial concern banks are in the process of finalizing guidelines for financing such projects that are bankable i hope that the film industry will take full advantage of these measures to bring about a greater degree of professionalism and transparency in this operations and will not do things chupke chupke and certainly not chori chori as i have already stated the most serious problem is the poor state of the fiscal health 
of both the central and state governments. The combined fiscal deficit of the two together is around 10 percent. As promised in my earlier budget speeches, I appointed the Expenditure Reforms Responsibility Bill in this House in the last session. The bill seeks to reduce the fiscal deficit to 2 percent and completely eliminate the revenue deficit over the next five years. A number of initiatives have already been taken to contain, in particular, the growth of non-plan expenditure. I have not allowed any increase in non-plan expenditure this year. Consequently, for the first time in many years, the fiscal deficit target fixed in the budget has indeed been achieved and remains at 5.1% in the RE of the current year. The target of 3.6% revenue deficit has also been achieved. I intend to carry forward the process of bringing about structural changes in the composition of central government expenditure and effect economy in non-plan revenue expenditure with greater vigor while improving the quality of plan expenditure. For this, I propose to take the following initiatives. User charges for services provided by government and its agencies will be revised, keeping in view the increased cost of these services. A portion of this increase will be provided to enhance the maintenance and quality of these services. Similarly, postal rates will be revised moderately to contain the rising postal deficit. All requirements of recruitment will be scrutinized to ensure that fresh recruitment is limited to 1% of total civilian staff strength. As about 3% of staff retire every year, this will reduce the manpower by 2% per annum, achieving a reduction of 10% if five years as announced by the Prime Minister. The surplus pool under the Department of Personnel will be streamlined and equipped to re redeploy and retain surplus staff. Employees in the surplus pool will also be offered an attractive VRS package. Standard license fee or government accommodation will be enhanced by 50% for Group A, 25% for Group B, and 15% for other categories of staff with effect from April 1, 2001. Facility of LTC to central government employees will be suspended for two years for the remaining part of the four-year block period, except for employees who are entitled to last LTC before retirement. Use of information technology in government activities with large public interface will be maximized 
to promote efficiency. For this purpose, operations like GPF, pension, pay and accounts, offices, passports, income tax, customs, central excise will be fully computerized by March 31, 2002. Stop.